Hi. <laughs> it's me, your old friend, uh, Martin. Welcome back to Japan. Today I'm making a video uh, about the ordinary. The ordinary every day, day to day here in Japan. Uh, more, more about how the extraordinary becomes the ordinary. Stick with me, it'll make sense in a moment. Let me put the trash away. Hang on one second. Welcome back to Japan. Today's video is about the ordinary, or about, more specifically, about how the extraordinary becomes the ordinary, the exotic becomes the mundane. It's uh, video number two on this theme. Something uh, really ordinary happened to me last week, or, or maybe it was extraordinary. I think it's extraordinary. I got COVID for the first time. That's right, last week, about nine days ago, I got the coronavirus here in the mountains of Shizuoka, Japan. I feel fine. It was surprisingly, uh, surprisingly ordinary. I feel like I had mushrooms for a few days, then I had chills briefly, and uh, now I just feel kind of tired. So um, let me show you what happens when you get corona in, uh, in Japan. Let me show you the clinic, come on. This is my local clinic here in Shizuoka, and uh, when you get the coronavirus, or you suspect you have the coronavirus, they don't want you to go into the main building. So I pulled my car into that garage over there, and the doctor came out and gave me the exam. They put the swab, swab, swab up my nose in that garage. And my son, who's nine, his Japanese English translation skills were at their height because he was able to translate between the doctor and myself throughout the entire exam. The only thing I understood was COVID. And, uh, yeah, that's where it happened. That's where the COVID began, right there, officially in that garage. Um, you know, like I said earlier, I felt like I was on mushrooms for uh, a few days. Um, I didn't have any aches, I could breathe, I didn't have a runny nose. I just felt really like I drank mushroom tea and like a couple of Guinness or something. It was really this mushy brain feeling. Then that went away, and then I had a fever for a day or two. And uh, ever since then, I've been kind of tired, like these waves of feeling tired. But uh, COVID was surprisingly non-dramatic. The most dramatic part was seeing the, the positive test. So that's where I am in the COVID voyage. And uh, that's the garage where it began, here in, uh, here in my town at Chizoka. Come on, come on. Everything's so picturesque. This is just an average everyday house, house here in the town. Old school Japanese house, sort of mid school cars on either side. I just thought I'd show you that because this is about the ordinary and, and this is uh, this is part of the uh, part of the extraordinary that's become ordinary. Look at that, isn't it amazing? This is, uh, this is like the Broadway in Houston, in my neighborhood. It's like Maine and Maine. Midday. Come on, come on. This is just an average, ordinary, everyday house. It's pretty extraordinary. Pretty extraordinary. This is another house that just blends right in become really ordinary but it too it too it too is extraordinary it's like rising up like an arc Thank you. 
across the Oigala River here, it's become really, really, really ordinary. But when I look at it in the context of this video, it's pretty extraordinary. Those are, those are tea fields up there. The ordinary and the extraordinary, they, they cross over. Now all these foreign cars are gonna cross. They're really ordinary. Look at how many of them are white and gray and black. It's extraordinary. Their ordinariness is extraordinary. The white, gray, black car Japanese phenomena is really one of the great mysteries to me. It's not a mystery. I was told that it's so the cars maintain their resale value. In my neck of the woods, as you can see surrounding me, so many of the cars are white, black, or gray. That's ordinary. <laughs> that is really extraordinary. doesn't get any more ordinary than a gray wall. But behind this wall that I've driven by a thousand times, there's like a trillion something. So either chickens or dogs. I don't want to trigger them, but I swear a second ago they were going bananas. Maybe, maybe if I turn on the car, they'll do it again. Hang on. Apparently not, but I swear there was like a trillion birds or dogs going nuts a second ago. The ordinary. The ordinary. Here's another bit of the uh, extraordinary that's become ordinary. It's harvest. It's fall in Japan. Behind me is a field of uh, rice. And the bundles that are hanging on those uh, poles, that's rice that's drying. And behind that, that golden field, that's rice that's growing. And behind that, the green patch, that's green tea. It's kind of all of Japan, sort of in this one frame back here. The farmer over here is a K truck. This is the whole, <laughs> this is as ordinary as it gets. And this is, uh, it's pretty extraordinary, the ordinariness of this. Let me step out of here so you can take in the rice and the tea here in Japan. can't tell from here but that farmer is probably old enough to be my 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 uh my father and he's working by himself out here in the fields the extraordinary that becomes ordinary So here we are at the end of our little voyage through the ordinary and the extraordinary and the exotic and the mundane. Standing in front of a, uh, a car wash machine here in Japan. 
In Japan, the car wash moves back and forth across the car and the car remains still. There's some type of metaphor there that makes sense. Hope you enjoyed this little voyage. And um, the near future, I'm gonna do this again. I've got a really good idea. Work breeds work, and this work will breed something that I think that you're gonna find interesting. Thank you for sticking with me, and um, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.